This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What's going on guys? So today we're winterizing the chiller and the boiler system here at this old church. It's an aqua snap, it's a plate heat exchanger on it. It's uh, not got a lot of surface area. So we're getting drained out. Got another guy here to help me actually watches my videos which is kind of funny so we got 255 or 50 gallon uh 55 gallon barrel drums there and what we're doing is getting we gotta get the water out of the system now this goes to a big old air handler up there above the ceiling what they've been doing is running just plain water and then every year they got to drain it or refill it and then they got air in the system and it's just a hassle these are some of the one mclean boilers we just did the service on these that's going to be our hose to get the cycle into the system we're going to pump it in through the boiler there so we're going to push it out with gravity because you figure the air handler even though we're coming up out of the basement the weight of the water is going to shove it all down and then we're gonna fill it back in that way too, which what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure out the glycol into the big container. Then we'll know how much we've taken out and then we'll be able to pump it back in. Yeah, it's better than what it was. It's darn close. We just put a okay. block when under I there. Open this, let's, let's go, when I open this, that'll give you some relief now. Take check. the pressure off of it and then I can open that up. And then we'll... I'm gonna close this back up so we can get your stuff done. If yep. Cool. This is their ladder. So I gotta go up here, climb the chicken chicken ramp here. Get up here to the air handler, which got all of our fancy controls on here, which is ridiculously crazy. Said we're going to let the water pressure, like a water tower, shove it down. So gonna go ahead if we right now hit this see water comes out which I know we're gonna put a valve on there which is gonna make it a lot easier so and then we'll replace that auto bleed all right Joe go ahead okay I'm gonna open her up here you see any air sucking down pressure's still a little bit there yet okay, you should start feeling some air sucking on your Oh. Now I am. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, loosen this thing up so we can pull through. Yeah, we made the mistake of not turning the pumps off. But you can you can hear it sucking big time now. It's not coming out in brutal force, but it's full flow. Works nicer than foam because foam got to dial it and all that other crap. We already got 50 out of it? No, it's... it's uh... It's down there, but you can see it's, I should get that thing straight. We might not have a lot of pressure to push out either. It's slowing down a little bit, so we're going to hook a male to female on there and suck it out of the system. Okay, it kind of stopped all the way to that tower water there, if you want to call it that. It filled up, you know, probably 20-some gallons. See how this does. It may work, may not, I don't know. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it works. Bad. Yeah. It was starting to really slow down, so I shut it off and it's sucking on my finger. So he's going inside to shut it off. That way we ain't sucking air into the boiler. We're about 75 gallons. Maybe we don't need as much as we thought we would. I mean, that's about 65 gallons, something like that. Yeah, we'll stick it in there, run it for a while, and then we'll see where our percentages are at. We don't want to go too high because then we won't have the heat transfer that we want. It gets loose, just kind of flip it on, flip it off. There it goes. All right, so I stopped the pump. I'm going to run upstairs then. If you want to open that back up, you should be okay, and I got it valved off. It's, it's open now, so we can turn it on. I know, but don't you want me back upstairs first? Yeah, I guess that would probably be a good, good plan here. <laughs> I don't like that. It looks crookeder than dog's hind leg. I don't, 
don't know what to do about that. It's threading in there though, that's what sucks. All right, as you can see, the new one is a lot better shape than the old one, so let's get this threaded up and get it in there. This should do a little better than what it was. There we go. Looks a lot straighter than what it did before, that's for sure. This is a dedicated refrigerant hose I use for blowing out uh, things with nitrogen or running water through it. It doesn't have an end on the other side. So it works out good that way. And we got our bucket here. All right, Joe, I'm ready. Open that up. Hey, we'll give you some juice here. Let the juice loose. Well, it's been a while, at least 15, 20 minutes, but I just heard some gurgling of water down there, which it's got to come across and then come up and then fall down, which I doubt we got everything out of this coil because it's below grade, but we're pumping the remain, uh, remaining in there. We got the 55 gallons in and uh, we're starting to add some more, which we should have full coil of water here. We got the chiller that was completely empty, which like I said, it's just a plate heat exchanger, so it's not very big. Um, we got a few other areas of the, of the uh, church here that's probably full of water yet too. So the thought and theory of this was the water level comes down and then it goes back up with glycol versus, I'll go with his idea over, over mine. So he just stopped it while I was adding oil. Had some uh, up here, I also yanked out my one for my circulator, you can see the seals down there. They're not, you know, encompassed, but it definitely is better than what it was. Then we gotta use our fractometer and we'll find out where our levels are at, but we've got to let it all mix together first before we can get accurate, accurate readings. There we go. There we go, we're getting there. Start to throttle it down so we don't get a bunch of. Finally got my first splash, but there's still air coming. You getting any flow up there? Yeah, it's, it's starting to hit now, finally. It's coming and going. Oop, oh, got it. Yeah, I, I started getting solid flow, then now I kind of cracked it a little bit and slowed it down, so it's coming and going. And as soon as we get this filled up, we'll kick on that circulator and get her all mixed together. All right, it appears we got solid water. I think I'm gonna go ahead and kick my pump on. Yep. So, get the fan, something, something. And... All right, so we have a, a uh, damper here that just kicked on. I just got another thing of air. Quite the conglomeration here. Got one coming in, going back. You got a bypass basically, so it can go through here. It's kind of interesting. Open less heat, close more heat. There's our control guys' stuff there. Not seeing the circulator pump call yet. May have to kill these. I killed power to it and it started to reset. Got some old pneumatic controls here. I got into the computer system and got it running. I don't know if this one here is on the same deal as the other one. You can see you got another boiler over here, a little burger. So, yeah, it's not calling. Those are stop. These are variable speed uh, circulators. Okay, it must have worked because the air handler's running now. Now this one here, I said open for less heat, closed for more. I want this thing to circulate. Theoretically, it don't look like the circulator pump is calling because the VFD is. Nothing's marked one way or the other, so you don't really know exactly what they're trying to do. Got the blower. Yeah, the pump's not calling. All right, so we got our circulator pump running, and we have our valve cranked 
So we should be flowing. Some we heat. should be flowing some heat now if the boiler's running like it should. So let's go look and see. All right, it is calling, so it says. Yep, it's spinning. Oh, kind of let it do its little thing here, just a little drizzle. It's starting to get a little green, I think. Here it comes. I got it cranked just a little bitty bit. Yeah, it's good. There are a couple there, they're tiny. Yeah. So this one here has got boilers that have had issues with air and we're probably gonna run into that, I'm hoping, because I thought that we had some issues with the control boards possibly acting stupid. All right, so we've got two on McLean, uh, slim fit. We've got two of them here, we've got two circulators. They come together in parallel, come up here to our top. Got water movement coming over here to our air separator. Got our pump down here, which you would think is kind of a corny design. Old fashioned tank, expansion tank, no bladder type. Comes up to here. This is the most confusing mess. We've got valves here that modulate. It's really confusing. Got the chiller out here. We, like I said, we just finally got it. I, I labeled things with arrows and what they do and how to bleed it because we got a big old air handler up top finally took care of all that. Nobody labeled none of that crap. So everything is so much easier now to find. So over here on our control system, just got in and talked to the control guy, figured out what my numbers were, made sure it was on and off. He ticked it on and off. It is the boiler right there. It's calling, made sure we had voltage going to it. We uh, got it over to it. So come over to here and I had a look at my book. So 16 here. And here is your thermostat call for heat. Come here and run AC volts. We come to it. I gently got in here because I didn't want to move nothing. And we show no voltage. We go to ground. We have voltage there. Check the next terminal going up. We got voltage there. So we are looping voltage back and forth. It should be calling. So when we come down to here, basically it doesn't say that it's even calling for it. It's in standby nothing circulating this boiler is 68 degrees there's boiler temp 68 degrees system temp 118 same thing this is a shadow boiler that's the politically correct term pressure switch is not accurate it's not shut down on that it would be flashing if there's an issue outdoor temp's 43 so that temperature sensor seems to be working right she's not calling for nothing she's not locked out that's what's kind of crazy here we can unplug this here. I thought this controller is maybe going bad. It still says network FLC standby. We can come over here to our meter, just not that the voltage didn't tell us what we needed, but we can go between these two terminals, see if we got resistance between them. 0.7 ohms, 0.1 ohms. Added some uh, dielectric grease to my connections. Uh, not so much this one but inside the meter, holy crap, it made a huge difference. I mean, 0.1 ohms, that's unheard of. These are American-made leads, they're made for, uh, these are called Probe Master. They're American-made, unbelievable. Joe Shearer gave me these at the uh, Florida show down there, and man, these things are awesome. You gotta modify them a little bit, they got this weird finger protector thing, but these things are awesome. So far, they've, I've had them, what, since March? So nine months of being wound around it, which you aren't supposed to really do. So that's plugged in there. Yeah, the blue P14, that's your supply and return sensors. So that's those. Uh, do we have double ups? I don't know if they're stealing, because you've got our own right there. And I don't know if they've tried to stick the ones from the boiler in there. I don't think they did. Okay, yeah, there is sensors underneath there. There it is. And then the other one should be right here. Yep. 
So it is reading its own sensors for that, and then the control system has its own sensors. Okay, well, we are technically only like 43 degrees outside, and it's thinking system temp's 118, even though the boiler is 68. Thing is, I'm not sure why we're picking up all that extra temperature. My thing I'm doing right now is narrowing down, is this an issue with it thinking that I am warm enough because it thinks the system temperature is 106 degrees? When you feel the boiler, she's not been warm for a while. Feel the circulator, it's cold. This one here, uh, this one here might be running. Yep, she's a running. Now it worked on Sunday, they said. Come down here, you can see, see that it's running. So what we got going on here is it thinks the uh, temperature doesn't need to be that high. So let's go ahead and play with it a bit. Let's check some sets, some settings here and then I'll let you know what it changed or found, whatever. Now I thought we were calling to the attic air handler, which is for the main sanctuary area. So when I come in here and I stick my finger in the little tear that I've used in the past to feel, they're both cold. Uh, I don't know, it should be recirculating around. Let's see what we got over here for heat. It's not even hot, so we're not even moving water. So we probably got air in this stupid thing again. This is an issue I've had in the past. Let's go over here, see if we got warm. Cold there, thumb check there. Ouch, now that's, that's hot right there. I don't like that. That's definitely warmer than I want to put my finger on, which makes no sense because this right here should be hot but yet it's not hot, which makes no sense because the water's gotta go this way. So water comes through, goes around over to here because it can't go that way because it hits the ball valves, and yet it's hot on top. It's the screwiest flipping setup I've seen. It's, it's such a, a piping nightmare. And it's been a, a nightmare all the way around, just a pure nightmare. Yeah, see, it's not even hot here. So we've got air issues. We got air issues, again. The whole reason why we switched this to glycol, because every year they were draining this boiler down, or the um, chiller down, because it's outside, and it would run to straight water. And then when they turn it back on, they'd get air in it. And it was because one particular person was afraid that if there was a leak, that it would damage more things with the glycol than what just water would do. But every year we fought this battle of air. So the way I ended up figuring out how to bleed it, because I have an auto bleed upstairs, I have a bleeder over here, you have an air separator, because everything's in parallelish areas. Okay, so you come in here through the circulator up, T's can come this way, it comes across to there, comes down, and go through the air handler and back up. You got a modulating valve here. So right now, if it was to call through, it would come through go on down and back. So right now, the water is going to come through, T over that way, there's a check valve there, get pulled in, goes across, and this position here with it going flat and straight down is occupied. So we're really just occupying the downstairs. You're basically just running the water on through. It's going in a circle. So in reality, you're just going on through and going around. It's, it's confusing when you don't think about it or when you actually think about it. But the circulator there partakes of some of that water, takes it down and then jams it back to here. So it's just kind of going around doing a loop thing. And then it steals a little bit off that T over there, goes down through the coil and comes back up to here. All right, so we're gonna go up here in the attic. Look at the air handler. This is where I had to valve it off the last time and force it to be bled downstairs. I, it sure acts like it's got air in it. Circulator's running, but it's not warm up here. I got a auto bleed here. What we ended up doing, or I ended up doing, was stopping it on the outgoing side here. And see, in occupied, it actually stops the flow 100%. The one downstairs just partakes of it, kind of screwballed. Unoccupied just lets it recirculate. This had worked for two weeks, no problem. Now all of a sudden something got changed. I ain't sure exactly how this happened, but. So this basement area is all done by this air handler that we've been working around. Basically, you just got two air handlers. And this one here and that one over there. They're in parallel. It's just a big loop that goes around but for whatever reason, 
just turns into a a major pain. I mean, I literally had to hook that hose on there because it had so much air and it just was going all over the little spitter sputters. And so what we got now is the upstairs cannot come back. I stopped it. So it's got to go through here. And go through here so it's gonna go from here across it can go all the way to here and I've closed this so it's got to go that way go through that check valve goes down through that into the circulator through the coil back up through the coil up in through here through the valve this valve is basically like this pattern and go through or this way so with it being straight up and down it stops the flow from going this way but it does allow it to come up from the bottom and go left when it comes up from the bottom and out because it came down and back up again it went around to the left and goes around to this loop the loop comes back over to here from over there it goes backwards which would have been better if this would have been put over here so it's got to come over here head dead heads into that closed valve so it has no choice but to go this way comes through and on out and circulates around and around. If we put our finger on this, it's not hot. The boilers are, was calling. So what I ended up doing the last time is I closed this valve here, which ended up forcing it through that loop that I just showed you. So we close this and I'm starting to feel it get a little bit warm. And then maybe do it and close again. And this is how I got the air out of it the last time. Because there's no good way to get this air out of here. It's it's kind of a, I don't know, this is existing system that we tied into. And it worked. And it has been working. It's just every year it's a battle to get it bled. And then usually you're good to go after that. For whatever reason, things just took a dive. So we're getting some air there. I am warm, definitely warm and it's looping its way around. So downstairs, air is taken care of. Hopefully upstairs is good because like I said, I stopped it coming out of the coil. So any air should have been trapped in the coil then into the bleeder. So we're gonna go up there and do that real quick and open it back up and see if everything runs. So I just opened that valve coming out of the coil and I'm waiting for this one to get warm. This is my incoming side, which it was starting to. Okay, it's getting to the point where I do not wanna leave my thumb on it. We're good there. It's come out at 84 and rising. So it's cranking some air. That's why that water don't feel very hot coming out of the coil because it's going in the duct work where it should be going. I found out it's the first time I've added glycol. So I was looking at burst factor versus freeze slush. And so I probably needed to add some water anyway because currently my burst is like negative 30 and we're never that cold but my slush was around five, but if we should never slush, you think about it, if these things are running. So, and it's not a chiller, so we're running a boiler, so we're never gonna be at five and worry about slush because they're gonna be hot water. My controls guy used to be at HVAC Tech and he's, he's always got a good answer for something. He's the one that kind of helped me figure out how to get this thing bled. He's always been helpful and he's doing everything that I'm trying to do with the new guys here and online is to just try to help and not discourage and run everybody down. I know he don't watch my videos or nothing like that because, you know, to somebody like him, they're boring. We got that. I just want to double check a few other things in the book here just to make sure. Uh, right now, I mean, we're, we're holding pretty good. We got the outdoors sensor on there. It's trying to hold about 134. So everything's looking pretty good. Well, guys, that's going to wrap that one up. What uh, the biggest issue I think here was, was the glycol. It's got some foaming action going on. I was a little high, I think, at the 34% mark, which we calculated it in, and it kind of ended up being a little on the, the higher side there. Um, it was recommended to me by one of the other guys to go with like 29%. So I think what happened is uh, when it got shut off, it basically started to uh, liquefy and the air separated, and then it either pocketed in the system, which is what I think ended up happening, and then the sensors, uh, the temperature sensors, uh, got hotter quicker because they had no water removing the heat from them. And then it uh, didn't call for heat from the boiler, 
and the boiler didn't run, so the water wasn't warm at all. So even if it had a little bit of air in there, it wasn't completely locked, but I think it just shut down because of that. So once I did that, uh, bled it all out and everything, it just seems like it uh, took care of it. Um, it's working good. Uh, I wrote on the paperwork that we may need to come back and add a little more water to it and, and flush a little, little glycol out, but it's kind of a trial and error thing right now. I was citing on the air of caution. Uh, like I said, I haven't done a bunch of it. We can get down to zero to negative 10, 15, just depends um, when it's like stupid, unusually uh, cold. But anyhow, when there's, like I said in the past, it, it, it's a difference between burst and slush. Slush we're not worried about since we're using it in a boiler. Uh, burst is what we're worried about. So I got the sheet downloaded from the factory on what exactly those percentages are at because you can't just go off your anometer because uh, it usually will show you the uh, freeze protection not the burst and so that's about it if you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it please hit the thumbs up button and we will go from there until next time guys we'll catch you on the next one later